As a professional, if you want to gain influence, power, and growth in a marketplace, then the newsletter is the most powerful thing you can do. Now, I'm not talking about my newsletter necessarily. I'm talking about you yourself having a newsletter, and we'll discuss the benefits right here. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. There are numerous benefits of writing a newsletter or some kind of periodic letter to reach out to those who can make decisions in your favor, to who are your customers or clients, or who are otherwise in your family. Now, I'm not talking about the end of the year uh, summary of events written by the dog or the cat that you send out. I don't know if you've ever got one of those uh, Christmas letters. Now, that's an interesting concept because it connects people and as annoying as it seems to be and is self-centered and all this other stuff, um, it actually is a useful tool to stay in touch with people, but it is not consistent enough to establish a responsive behavior of the recipient to either reciprocate or to otherwise see you in a favorable light. Now, here's what I mean by this. A properly done newsletter will position you as an expert in the marketplace. Now, we focus on building business relationships because some of the stuff is tacky if you're trying to build personal relationships. Um, if you met somebody at a restaurant and you you know, you know met in a group and you kind of kicked it off and you're thinking about dating, you wouldn't send letters remotely and you certainly wouldn't send the same letter to five different people that you've met that you're interested in dating. You would have a more personal interaction with the individual. You would get to know them better. It would be a dialogue rather than a broadcast. But in the professional world, you need to be able to master one-to-many relationships. That means, let's say you're a lawyer, a doctor, you're a, an advisor, a CPA. You need to be able to reach out to your entire customer base, current and past, and share with them ideas and concepts that are going to help them solve problems or at least identify the problems they have so that they come to you to solve the larger problem. So you're a lawyer and you work with estates and you want to make sure your clients have an up-to-date estate plan. So your newsletter might share tips and tricks about the, and you wouldn't call them tips and tricks because there's nothing tricky about law, but you might talk about the update or legislative changes that would impact your clients. Now, you will have friendly things in there and personal stories and things, maybe personal stories from your clients because you're also building community, but the key focus is a one-to-many communication. So you're going to write the newsletter once and you're going to broadcast it to your customer base. Now, again, a benefit of a newsletter is that you can write it once and send it many times. In a personal relationship, you want personal notes to each individual. But if you've got 100 clients, you've got 300 clients, it's a little difficult to do that. A newsletter fits the place. You can also use a newsletter to raise money. You can raise money for yourself. Let's say you're an investor or a uh, some kind of uh, uh, small investment fund, you can actually use a personal letter that provides uh, industry trends and activities. And this uh, this letter goes out also inviting prospects to get better utilization from their cash by investing it with your firm. Or it reinforces the value of those who have already invested in your form and your firm. There becomes a, a connection to your gross uh, income and your free net cash flow because a newsletter, while it does cost you to produce, it does require time. It actually organizes ideas. It can be the backbone of a marketing program and it also provides a means of feedback from clients. So it delivers both on the front end uh, of acquiring new clients, but also on the retention of clients. So you get better utilization of all your marketing dollars and the price to send a newsletter becomes irrelevant because, again, you're positioning yourself as an expert. You're connecting with clients. You're sharing client success stories. A lot of times, client A doesn't know that client B had a great success, and client A may drop out before they get to the position or condition in which client B had a giant success and win. Of course, you're going to use the newsletter to facilitate those wins, but again, It is the connection. How do we increase your business while helping 
those clients and those individuals who receive the newsletter. Uh, if you want to add to your net worth, a newsletter is a valuable way of doing it. Let's say you have 20 clients today and your newsletter has gone out to keep those clients loyal and you've measured loyalty or the number of referrals a client has produced and you see that the, the clients are staying longer, they're referring more people, they're paying on time. This starts creating equity in your business because every new client you put into the newsletter newsletter is a client that is going to have better retention. That's going to have better referrals and this, and you can see how the snowball. So if you go from 20 to 200 to 2000, again, the newsletter function, once you write it and, and you can have staff help you write it, but once you've written it, it doesn't matter if you send it to 20 or 20,000 individuals. The ROI is there, you can measure it, and you can know that this is a way to add to your net worth because it is an equity value. You can put a dollar amount on each person. Now, again, it's more than just the dollar amount that we have to look at. If they are paying, staying, and referring, they have loyalty to you. And you can measure the loyalty through the client behavior, where otherwise, if you didn't have this newsletter going out every month, um, you could miss these opportunities. Um, another point that's very valuable is that you probably have ideas, topics, and concepts that are relevant to your clients, but you don't really want to fully develop the idea until you know the clients are interested in it. So for example, I have gigabytes of videos, audios, answers to questions from, from subscribers, answers to questions from private clients. I have project notes. It takes a lot of work and effort to turn that into content, special reports, blog posts, other things. So, But in a newsletter, the, the reader is expecting little quick tips uh, and, and many different ideas to kind of give them talking points throughout the day. And then as long as you offer a way for them to raise their hand and ask questions, you can find out which topics are of value to your particular newsletter subscribers. Now you could have subscribers that pay you to receive the newsletter, but I'm even arguing that as a professional, um, even if you're working as an employee, this newsletter within your topic area of expertise is an excellent way to be known in the marketplace. And it can be done with a little or no effort on your part if you follow a simple system. I've also found that a newsletter will keep a mailing list strong. So if you've got a contact management system and you've got all the people you used to work with and the former managers and all these people who are in your address book and maybe you haven't stayed in touch with them, if you think about a way that you can serve them best, how can you help your peers? How can you help your previous managers? How can you be someone of value in a way that, uh, keeps you in the radar when new opportunities come along. And one thing I found with peers, for example, um, so I used to be a Solaris systems administrator and we had a little uh, informal newsletter going amongst us where some of us would have new ideas, tips, tricks, um, different operating system functions would come out like the ZFS file system. And we would just write a paragraph or two and we posted it on this message board and we all stayed in touch with each other and asked questions of each other. And there was a point in Maryland, and this is back in the 1990s, where I knew all 25 of the senior systems administrators, the individuals at my level, and we have even built this small network. And again, this is where a lot of this comes from that we talk about here. But we built this small network where if someone decided they're going to leave their position, the rest of us knew about it before their employer knew about it. And again, it's that we built loyalty, we built connections, we built uh, mutual value in this community all through a newsletter and there's various forms of newsletters. Um, but again, if somebody's making, uh, so I guess the rates are maybe 98,000 a year, somebody's making 98 a year, I'm making 71 a year. And, and this again, this is back in the 90s. Um, if they were about to leave their position, we would jockey for that position and, and even get resumes in before they left because there was a sense of 
of we were measuring our success by the success of our clients or the success of the systems we're managing. And so if you have to leave unexpectedly or you got a new job opportunity, um, some of these folks were going off to, to Google and uh, you know Linux was starting to pick up there, a lot of Red Hat stuff going on. Um, we didn't want to leave our companies in a lurch, so we almost were able to replace ourselves as we moved on to new opportunities, and then sometimes we would one somebody in the network would find out about an opportunity that wasn't right for them, but they could pass it along to the community. A newsletter is what stitched all that together and helped keep things uh, productive for everybody involved. Now, as the marketplace improved, and Solaris eventually got, I think it got bought by Oracle, and uh, we started all, you know, we start talking about these trends in the marketplace. We also even would group off and, and learn a little bit of Linux together, learn a little bit of uh, um, different platforms and operating systems, and and it just was a great way to move the career role forward. Now, in this case, we were publishing to a private message board, and then we would uh, scan materials and shave it and share them. I don't recommend a digital platform unless it's a very small group. So this is a small group where everybody is contributing. If you're in a situation where you're writing the newsletter, maybe one or two pages, a simple outline will get you started. Uh, you may want to use postal mail so that you can mail it to people. Um, so it's, it comes to them in a way that's easy to, to consume. And also if you sp- Send the emails out to people who haven't asked for it. That's kind of spamming. So we want to be a welcome guest instead of annoying pest. You also want to make your newsletter about the person who receives it because just like the Christmas newsletter that goes out, people are like, who do they, who do they think they are? You want to be a, a welcome guest by focusing on the person who receives the newsletter. And so you may have a, a schedule advisory about your schedule, but the majority of the events in the schedule are things that the, that end user would be interested in, that, that client would be interested in. So you do have to segment your newsletter a little bit. You might have a newsletter for decision makers. So, so for example, if you're a consultant, almost doesn't matter what you consult in. You may want to have a newsletter that goes out to decision makers who can hire you. And it talks about how to hire a consultant. When do you need a consultant? It talks about what to look for in a consultant and it would help them whether they hire you or hire somebody else. Now I hear what you're saying. Well, Justin, if they're going to hire someone else, then I've wasted the dollar or $2 it cost me to send them that letter that month. And then by the end of the year, I've wasted $24. No, you haven't wasted anything because what they're going to see is someone who is proactive in the marketplace. And when they have a question about hiring a consultant or a question about your topic area. So a friend of mine was a uh, a professional engineer. So he had a certification that made him a professional engineer. He could work for general contractors. He could work for the state. He could work for a lot of people on very large projects. His newsletter went out to the folks that could hire him, talked about changes in the industry, um, different things that they need to look for when they hire a professional engineer, all the stuff I just covered. And he ended up getting a better type of contract work. So he was sending something to every building contractor who could hire him. So these are commercial builders. And he sent it to all the state reps who can uh, basically the, the the Army Corps of Engineer folks, the state engineering groups, the, the folks that are going to be doing like highway projects. What he found he was able to do is fill up his book of business, but he then gained an advisory position where he'd get invited to trade groups and get to speak. And uh, we we met through Toastmasters. So he'd go to these trade groups and he would speak about the latest trends and guess where the ideas came from that he would speak about. Well, his newsletter became a way of indexing these ideas and concepts, and then he pulled from the newsletter a topic, expanded on it in a presentation, invited all the people from his newsletter group or his his uh, associated group there and filled the room. Now, he had it recorded, and he, he was able to give out the recordings and, and make a uh, – really positioned himself as an expert in the marketplace. He was able to double his billing rate. So there are a lot of professional engineers out there that are getting paid pennies on the dollar and they're struggling to find jobs. He was at the point where he eventually was able to hire additional professional engineers on his team and send them out to do these jobs that were 
were there. So he ended up getting better jobs, better rates, and then hiring other people on his team. And he went from an individual freelance professional engineer to a whole team of people that ran kind of like an architect office uh, or an engineering office where they would just go out there. Now, because he had the newsletter and because he could bring in so many new opportunities and so many new jobs, it was a really good win-win situation for the uh, the other engineers that would work with him. Um, they were able to get better insurance. They were able to do a lot. But the key is the newsletter becomes a simple way of organizing and indexing information. It becomes a way to create a two-way dialogue with clients. It's a way of demonstrating your value to those clients. And then ultimately, they will raise their hand. You have to ask them. They don't just magically raise their hand. Um, they will raise their hand and say, look, I noticed in 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 January's issue, you talked about these points. We're having a challenge with that. Would you mind coming out and taking a look at what we got? Then all you've got to do at that point is tell them how they engage you, what it costs, and then take care of it. Now, the newsletter isn't about being an advertisement. You will have an advertisement in it. You will have a way for someone to do a paid consultation or to to send you a question. Uh, But ultimately, the newsletter becomes an organizational tool, a positioning tool, a tool to activate your list. You know, you don't want to speak to an empty room, so why not invite the people from your mailing list so that you have a room full of people who already know, like, and trust you? Can you see how this works? Can you see how some kind of newsletter for a professional is going to put you in front of decision makers? It's going to keep you in the loop. It's going to make you a valued resource. Now, again, you might send 100 newsletters and nothing happens. You might send 2,000 newsletters and nothing happens. There is an element of being interesting and being uh, able to create a connection. But I have received newsletters from people who I know by name now. I have met them like twice. I know them by name. I know what's going on with their situation. I know what's going on in their business. And if I ever have a question in their area of expertise, I would not dare call somebody else and I'd be more than happy to pay whatever they ask because I know they're an expert in that topic. I know they've been looking out for my interests by by giving me valuable insights and ultimately I have a, kind of a relationship with them. Now, would they recognize me if we were both sitting at the same dinner table? Uh, no, they wouldn't. They Again, because they're sending, they started with two or 300 people on a list. Now they've got Maybe I think it's about 20,000 people on their list. You don't have to do that, by the way. You don't have to have a professional newsletter with staff running the newsletter. But again, they're in a power position when it comes to their industry. And it's just of extremely valuable resource. So you might be saying, well, newsletters are dead. Can I just send it over email? Uh, what about sending them a postcard? What? No, listen, if you're a professional, a lawyer, a specialized doctor, an accountant, a tax attorney, uh, if you are a uh, an individual who runs an engineering service, electrical contracting, any kind of specialized service where you have clients that could come to you more than once, especially if you have a complex service, then a newsletter, and there's a variety of forms of newsletters that you can use, a newsletter is extremely powerful. It is worth its weight in gold. It is worth every penny you invest. And in fact, you can measure the cost of the newsletter against the value in retention, referrals, and repeat business. It's just, it's just amazing. Worth every penny. Now, do I do a newsletter consistently? Yes, there are individuals who are high value clients to me and they do receive a monthly print newsletter or some kind of letter from me every month. Uh, And it's actually my from my desk newsletter. And the from my desk newsletter contains, uh, it's really an outline with tips and tricks that I carefully curate for that specific audience. And then it usually leads to the additional content that I have online, uh, but then always has a way for them to write in, to ask questions, to get more information. Um, I do some video supplements to that newsletter. I do, um, most of it's typed up and it's very easy to put together. Uh, it organizes the materials that I have. It helps the individual on the other end get ideas to solve problems. It gives them talking points so that when they're in a conversation and some topic comes up, they've got a few little words that they can say that make them sound smart. 
And overall, it is a wonderful investment on my part. And I can show you exactly how I measure the ROI on that. I can show you exactly how I I find it saves me time. It saves them time. And again, it's very powerful. Now, am I consistent with it all the time? I'm not. I really should be more consistent. A lot of times you should do what I say and not look too closely at what I do uh, because ultimately um, – there's going to be different stages in your life. So if, so when you've got an agency or you've got one or two people on staff and you're not doing a newsletter, you're you're shooting yourself in the foot. If you're a single or a solo practitioner and you're not doing a newsletter, uh, even just a single page letter, then you're shooting yourself in the foot. But there is a point where you have staff that ought to be doing a newsletter uh, to build up your performance rather than uh, you doing it yourself or you're just contributing to it. Anyway, we talk about that at another time. I'm Justin Hitt with Inside Strategic Relations. And the newsletter is a powerful way to position yourself in a marketplace, to, to position yourself as an expert, as the go-to person, and to dominate your opportunities for influence, power, and growth. Thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next episode.